Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished med-tech entrepreneur from Bangalore, India, Runam Mehta. Runam, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Ronam is the Chief Executive Officer of Health Cubed India Private Limited, which is a health tech company that designs and manufactures multi-parametric point-of-care diagnostic devices to enhance the quality of primary care in diverse settings. So, oh. Ronam, before we start talking about Health Cube, tell me a little bit about your own journey and what got you to start Health Cube. Right. So, um, Ashutosh, I love to tell people uh, that I'm actually trained to be a physiotherapist. Okay. My education background is not in business studies or, uh, you know, anything of that sort, mm. but in hardcore medical science. Mm. Um, but I'm a Marwadi. I've been brought up in a business family. So I think business is in the genes. Mm. Um, right at the outset of my career, when I was running a clinical practice, I saw an opportunity to bring a solution into corporates. Instead of waiting for people to develop spondylitis and find their way to my clinic, I said, how do I scale uh, you know, uh, my reach? Mm. And started a company called Work Ergonomics. Mm. Uh, it wasn't really fashionable to call things startups then. It mm. was just a small enterprise that I was running, mm. which took off much better than I expected it to. I eventually had to you know, hire consultants and get a lot of help to, to keep the ball uh, mm. rolling. Uh, when I got married and moved uh, cities, I realized that uh, in Bangalore, the awareness about what I was doing was very, very low. Mm. And I was looking at think almost for a year, I was struggling and trying to find a good fit for myself. Mm. And I stumbled upon Portia. Mm. Portia at that time, back in 2012, 2013, was a fledgling company, right? It was a startup. It was just starting out. They were trying to disrupt home health care. Mm. And they were looking to hire young medical professionals to help grow the business. Mm. So it was a very neat fit. I was there for seven years. I started as a junior exec. I exited as the head of strategic initiatives, mm. uh, having run multiple business verticals for Portia, uh, got my MBA along the way. And uh, Health Cube was, again, something that I stumbled upon. They were looking for someone to scale growth. Mm. They had a product they had a product that fulfilled a pressing need, but uh, the team didn't really have the ability to take it to market. Mm. So I joined as chief growth officer, uh, and in six months, they promoted me to lead the organization. Wonderful. So I'm not actually the founder, okay. uh, I'm, um, but I'm the professional CEO, uh, and I've been running the organization for over a year now. Fantastic. So let's come to Health Cube. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you're doing at Health Cube. And, you know, what have been some of your own learnings and challenges as you took charge of the company? Right. So first, let me talk about what HealthCube does by telling you a, a, a scenario or a story, mm -hmm. right? Uh, imagine you're in Uttarakhand or, uh, you know, Nagaland, right? A place where you don't have easy access that you have in a Gurgaon or in a Bangalore. And a patient walks into a clinic with high fever, uh, chills. Now, we know it's either dengue or malaria, especially mm. around monsoons. Uh, but it's going to take uh, about two to three days for a doctor to send him to a lab and get the results mm. back. So what does the doctor do? Do you put him on some treatment and pray that it works? Mm. Or do you wait for three days while this person has 103, 104 degrees fever, potentially with dropping platelets? You know, we don't really know uh, what's going on. Our device... Uh, in this situation, will give you a diagnosis in less than 20 minutes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you can explain this to someone who walks in with chest pain. Mm -hmm. Now, heartburn and heart attacks often mimic each other in symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, how does a person sitting in a rural or a very hilly, inaccessible area determine whether this person needs antacids or hospitalization? Mm -hmm. Our device can help you do a 12 lead ECG and uh, cardiac markers. Wow. which will help to point the doctor in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So what it is, it's a small device. It's mm -hmm. as small as a setup box. Mm -hmm. It does 30 parameters. It's been designed for rural and remote use. Mm -hmm. No internet, no electricity. Oh. The device will still work. Mm -hmm. Right? 
which means it provides accessibility to the millions in the world mm. who uh, otherwise could suffer from morbidity or mortality mm. because of lack of access to diagnostics. Amazing. That's in a nutshell what our technology is. Uh, coming to your other question, Ashutosh, mm. about the challenges. Mm. Uh, I think my challenges have been uh, similar as that of anyone who's bringing new technology into mm. the into the market. Mm. The first challenge is to uh, is to get people to accept that this technology works and it solves the problem. There is a there's a great de- deal of apprehension mm. uh, right at the beginning. Fortunately for us, we've built a brand over the years and and we've reached a place where people uh, know that we are reliable, that we are credible. Mm. But it, it's taken, you know, even when you have regulatory approvals, for example, we have a CE approval, which mm. allows us to sell in multiple countries across the globe, including mm. Europe. Mm. But to get our own, uh, you know, local people to trust us, it takes a little time. Mm. That's number one. The number two is there's always a very high entry barrier, especially in a medical uh, device kind of a situation. Mm. And rightly so. I mean, you don't want devices out there which are faulty, or, you know, which can deliver results that aren't uh, up to the mark. So mm. rightly so, the entry barrier is very high, but it's just harder for a startup with limited resources to fight incumbents on the technology uh, and you know bring the technology that we have into the market. Fortunately, again, in the last year and a half, we've made some headway. We've been able to sell to over 100 institutional clients. And we've also cracked a couple of really big uh, government contracts uh, in the recent past. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Quite fascinating. Coming back to the device, I mean, you said it's as large as a set-top box. And it can handle 30 different kinds of uh, diagnostics. Uh, what has gone into developing the capability to uh, bring such a large number of different types of diagnostics into a small box? Um, I think the first thing that goes into it is the genesis of the idea, right? Mm-hmm. So our founder, Dr. Ramanan Lakshmi Narayanan, when he started the organization, uh, or rather when he started just creating this multi-parametric device, the mm-hmm. thought process behind it was that in this country, less than 10% of the women Mm. Uh, complete their antenatal tests when mm-hmm. pregnant. Just mm-hmm. the basic tests, which is your mm. blood pressure, glucose, hemoglobin. Only 10% of women, and in some places in the rural uh, parts of the, of the country, the number can be as less as 2%. Okay. Now, this obviously leads to a lot of high maternal and uh, you know infant mortality. Mm. Mm. So he was trying to explore if there is a way to create a device that can do door-to-door uh, testing for mm. pregnant women. Mm. And through that idea, they did a pilot, I remember, in uh, in uh, reading about it in Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, the three districts where they did the, where they ran the pilot, they documented an increase from 10% to about 80% mm. uh, in the number of women who completed their antenatal check. Mm. Very impressive. Uh, so that was really where the idea germinated. Mm. And then it's taken, I think, over three or four years of tinkering, perfecting, iterating. Any device is an iterative process, medical mm. devices more so. Mm. So it's taken them three to four years to really bring the product in the shape that it is today. Mm. And of course, the application now is much wider. While it started Mm. as an antenatal device, Mm. we realized that it could do a lot more over time and uh, be applied in multiple situations. Incredible. You know, for someone who has been uh, involved in this whole part as a a pharmacy retailer, traditionally, there were only three or four devices that a consumer could use. I mean, you know, a glucometer. Uh, yeah. something for your blood pressure, uh, maybe a thermometer. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so delighted to see that, you know, something like this is available. But do you see this coming into a personal device uh, that I can carry with me, like I would carry my my watch, which has already started to tell me, uh, tell me my blood pressure, etc.? So, Ashutosh, this is not intended to be a personal device. This is intended to be a primary care device, right? So, it enhances your experience in a doctor's clinic. Mm -hmm. Now, today, when you walk into a primary doctor's clinic, Mm -hmm. what is your expectation from the doctor? Mm -hmm. He's going to ask for your history of your symptoms, etc. At the most, he will auscultate you and take your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That's about it, right? And then he'll he'll give you a prescription. Mm -hmm. But, But my suggestion to the consumer is, why should the doctor stop there? Mm. If you're a known diabetic or if you're at the risk for anemia, 
or if you have very obvious symptoms of, let's say, dengue malaria, hmm. why shouldn't he have the ability to do a little bit more hmm. within his clinic? And then the outcome of the visit, right? Hmm. Whether it's more prescribed tests, whether it's a prescription to take home, whether hmm. it's monitoring advice, uh, can that not be sharper, hmm. right? And I think because we expect only these two parameters or three hmm. things to be checked in a doctor's clinic, you know, we, we're all okay with it. Mm. But the fact is, with a little bit of effort, a doctor can actually do a lot in his clinic at a very small, you know, at a, a marginal cost to the consumer mm. and, and lead to much better, much quicker uh, outcomes. And there's no reason why every doctor shouldn't really be uh, doing it. Very interesting. Uh when I was again reading about you and preparing for this interview, there is also one of your flagship products called the Health Cube XL. Uh, tell me a little bit about this and how is this different from your regular product? No, so this is my flagship product. This the is Health Cube product. XL is the one that I was describing. Hmm. Our other products are all uh, subparts uh, or sets of the tests that the Health Cube does. Hmm. Uh, and to answer your previous question, do you see this device becoming a part of the household? The answer is no. Hmm. But our modular devices hmm. are being designed to become more user-friendly in, in the consumer sense. Hmm. So we have a device called the Vitals Plus, which is mm -hmm. coming up now, which will test you for all your chronic illnesses. So if you hmm. have a person at home who has high blood pressure and diabetes, hmm. most common chronic diseases, hmm. Hmm. instead of having a blood pressure machine separately and a glucometer separately, and you know, doing what my father-in-law does, he, he manually writes down uh, his results, and then it's a series of numbers that make little or no sense to anybody, right? Instead of doing that, you have this digital device, which will check these parameters and create a trend line. Mm. So at the end of Diwali, you just have to look at, you know, what's happened to your trend line and know that there are changes to be made now mm. that the festival is over. Fascinating. Well, not only your father-in-law, but, you know, whenever <laughs> this device is ready, please let me know I'm going to buy one of them because I have the same <laughs> problem of measuring my sugar twice a day. Yeah, uh, well, but tell me again, Runam, um, you know, there there are other devices available where you put something on your arm and that can, keeps measuring you. One of the leading companies has launched something. How important is it for individuals to be able to understand their own health challenges? I mean, for example, you said the difference between acidity and a heart, a heartburn and a heart problem. Uh, do you think if too many people start to uh, wear or get devices and nothing about health cube, but a more generic question, will we all start to become more paranoid? That's a very good question, Ashutosh. And interestingly, no one has ever asked me this question okay. before. So let me try and answer it uh, mm -hmm. comprehensively. Firstly, if you're talking about the CGM by Abbott, I absolutely adore that device. I've tried yeah. it myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it gives you amazing insights into how your behavior or your lifestyle impacts what's going on in your uh, in your system. Mm -hmm. And for a non-diabetic like me, I mean, it was an exercise of curiosity. And, uh, and I had immense learnings from it. Mm -hmm. uh, to answer the second part of your question, Will awareness lead to paranoia? Uh, I think hypochondriacs uh, exist, <laughs> right? It is a real yeah. problem. It yeah. is, uh, you know, uh, it is a, well, perhaps it's a disorder and some people need help to manage, uh, you know, their, their, their fears. Mm. But for a much larger percentage of people out there, I think awareness can only uh, help to save life. And I'll tell you why I say that. Hmm. Uh, I have a friend who lost her husband uh, at, you know, he was younger than 50. Uh, he basically contracted dengue. And uh, it's not a disease that anyone in a city with access to the best of doctors should ever die of. Hmm. Uh, the reason he really died was because he didn't, no one knew he's diabetic. Wow. And his sugar shot up to over 600. Hmm. So while he had dengue, what eventually took his life was undiagnosed diabetes. Amazing. So I think a little bit of fear, a little bit of you know paranoia, just kind of putting it in quotes out here, uh, can actually help us save save you know millions of lives, Absolutely. millions of people from going early. And mm. this is an anecdote. This is one person that I know, and mm. you know, I recently lost. But uh, 
you know, there's data out there that suggests that more than 60% of Indians are going to suffer from one or more, mm. one or more, I say this again, chronic diseases. Correct. And all of them lead to one another. Obesity mm. leads to diabetes. Diabetes mm. makes you more prone to hypertension, which in turn, you know, uh, makes you more prone to diabetes itself. So, you know, once you get into this uh, web of chronic diseases, mm. uh, there's really no getting out. Absolutely. I I completely agree with you. I just asked you the question to get your perspective <laughs> because I've often come across people who say, I don't go for a medical checkup because I don't want to know. And I say, but that's no answer. <laughs> but not knowing, you're not doing anything good for yourself. But thank you. Uh, my next question to you is that on your Health Cube Excel, um, and I'm delighted to learn that, you know, you started selling to institutions. Uh, how are the doctors accepting your results? Because a lot of doctors are still uh, used to seeing results coming out of the path labs. Yeah. Uh, so like in any technology, there's always early adopters. Hmm. And uh, we also have early adopters. We have doctors who bought our devices, uh, you know, about two or three years ago, just before COVID. Mm. and who are ardent users till date. Mm. We we already see that they have trend lines for their regular patients and you know patients actually come back to them again mm. and again mm. because they know the doctor is maintaining data and you know kind of prescribing medicines to them more uh you know more more scientifically in a more customized fashion for for that individual. That being said there is apprehension as there is for every new technology but the doctors who understand the utility of a screening mm. before, uh, you know, prescribing blindly the same test for every uh, individual uh, buy into this device uh, much more easily, right? Yeah. So, for instance, I may uh, I may be presenting with symptoms of diabetes. It is important to know instead of just sending me off for an HBA one C without any. Uh, action, it is important to know, am I likely, I mean, given my history, given my age, given my background, I probably don't have diabetes, mm. right? It could be something else. You can rule that out with a single prick. You know, if my random blood sugar is uh, within normal ranges, you know, you probably want to start thinking about the other reasons for the mm. symptoms rather than spending three days getting an HbA1c. Another important thing, Ashutosh, is that 60% of the people don't come back. Correct. That's a huge number. And this is a global number. 60% of the people world over will not come back to the doctor with a follow-up. So mm-hmm. they may or may not have done the lab test. They may or may not have gone and got their reports and they may not come back to you. Mm-hmm. The more, you know, you can equip people to manage their problem in the first visit itself, the more likely you are to have better outcomes in the long term. Mm-hmm. And do you see uh, HealthCube Excel sitting in every primary health center of our country? Absolutely. Okay. That's exactly the mission we are on. Mm. Can we power every PHC, CHC? Can we power every kiosk? You know, at some stage, every nook of the country. Can we have a, a way for people to know their uh, health condition more easily than mm. we do? And would you, as an organization, also focus on the data that is going to be pulled back into your servers at uh, and so that you can contribute or is it just a hardware uh, device? See, at the moment, it is a hardware software uh, platform. Hmm. Data, uh, some of the data comes into our platform with some of our institutions, the data hmm. goes into their, uh, hmm. their software. So it's not that we collect all of the data. Mm-hmm. Uh, if at some stage we uh, do decide to use the data for the greater good, uh, we would have to look into the laws around it and you know maintaining the sanctity sure. of the you know lands uh, you know, of the land mm. uh, then decide how we can contribute mm. Mm. very yes. interesting uh two more questions uh, for you you've started this off in 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 india but uh some a product like health cube excel should have a global demand it does. Uh, are you beginning to see any kind of uh, a demand coming from other parts of the world? Again, a very good question, Ashutosh. Uh, and you're absolutely right. There are multiple other geographies which have similar challenges to mm. India and that will benefit from technology like mm. this. More than that, there are several uh, geographies that do not have the capability or the talent pool 
Correct. to create their own um, solutions. So mm -hmm. we are seeing interest. We see interest from Southeast Asia. We see interest from Middle East. We're seeing interest from Africa. And we are cleared to sell in several of these geographies. We are getting registered in some of the others. Uh, we're currently working through partners to expand our global footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, my hope is over the next two years to have a much larger international presence. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I would I would be very proud if two years later I could say that we are a make in India, but sell to the globe, um, mm -hmm. you know, organization. Yeah, and, and you have plants uh, in Bangalore where you're making these. Yes, we, we manufacture in that. Fantastic. And my last question here, Ruram, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation based on your amazing journey your own experience uh, in the world of healthcare what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from your own journey and from our conversation okay i think that's a very loaded uh, question ashutosh uh, let me try and uh, you know be as articulate as possible mm -hmm. um i think my lesson number 1 mm -hmm. has been to have a plan mm -hmm. and then to be prepared to throw it out. Yeah. Because I had a plan when I studied, I was going to be a physiotherapist. I yeah. had a plan when I started my first venture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've always had a plan. I'm, I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. But I've realized that life sometimes gives you opportunities which are so much bigger than your plans. Correct. So I, I always say this, that you must have a written down plan and you must be prepared to tear it up mm -hmm. and, you know, go a different path. That's so it. that's that's really been my first lesson um, mm. so far. I think the second les lesson, and which is, it can be extrapolated, of course, to everyone, but I primarily see this for women, right? Because uh, women have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, psychological uh, burden that they carry about mm. their responsibility towards their uh, family. Mm. And uh, I, I always say to women that you can, you know, you need to create a support system Mm. that allows you to remain in the workforce. So yeah. lean on people around you, your yeah. spouse, your family, paid help. You know, yeah. There's no shame in getting a cook. There's no shame in getting a nanny. There's no shame Absolutely. in getting daycare if required. But, but stay the course, you know. Uh, career is never, you know, it's never like this. Mm. It will go up and down. There'll yeah. be stairs and then there'll be plateaus. Mm. And there'll also be times when you're going downwards. And uh, and that's okay, hmm. but but as long as you're just moving, as long as you're staying the course, you'll eventually, uh, you know, you'll eventually get there. Hmm. So, you know, I, I say to everyone, create a support system, lean on your support system, but don't stop moving. Hmm. You know, every step is hmm. progress. Hmm. So I have a five-year-old daughter, by the way. Okay. And I've never stopped working. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the biggest leaps my career made was after I had. Hmm. So. You know, if I can do it, there's absolutely no reason absolutely. why, yeah. you know, 50% of this world's population mm. uh, can't really. Uh, absolutely you know, agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that would be my, you know, lesson number two, mm. uh, that I'd like to leave mm. out there. And the last one, I think, and maybe a little cliche, is that you can learn from literally anything. Mm. There, there has to be, there's no person, no situation, no curveball that you can't, you know, leave without some learning. Mm. So, so I ask myself at every point, you know, what am I learning from this? For instance, this conversation, Ashutosh, uh, you know, I've done so many interviews uh, in the last six to nine months, and uh, you still managed to ask me a couple of questions that no one has asked me before, mm -hmm. uh, which is always interesting, right? I mean, uh, so you can walk away from any person in any situation with, with something a little bit more added uh, mm -hmm. to yourself. So That's look for that. Fascinating, fascinating. And on and on that note, and your three amazing lessons, uh, which is have a plan and be prepared to throw it out, which is really in today's startup world, be ready to pivot. Uh, second, very, very important, and I think we, my wife and I have lived this uh, throughout our lives, is women can have a support system and keep working. And the third one is learn from anything or anyone. Thank you, uh, Runam, for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about Health Cube, about your amazing journey. Uh, I will keep now looking out for all the stuff that I will see on in different publications on Health Cube Excel. And I will also keep looking out for that one product which you say I may be able to use for monitoring my own health. Absolutely. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.